will start on the ground. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. Well, come on, second and six now from the 24. Second and six. 11, 11, 11, 11. Burrow looking to pass. Out route here, he finds Turner. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. Call it a gain of six on the play. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. On two. They'll send a receiver in motion left. They snapped that at one. Now it's Burrow. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. So still a scoreless game in the first, but they're going to go for this thing on their own side of the field on fourth down. They'll try and throw forward with Burrow. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. Just gets rid of it, throws it away. The wise move there looked like nobody open. Now second down. The CD, you know, this offense at 11 and 0 now on the year. A few weeks ago, I remember asking you what kind of percentage chance that you thought they had at staying unbeaten the entire season. I think you said 25 percent. I'd imagine that number probably grown since then. I would agree with you, and I'm going to actually bump it up to closer to 50 percent, only because they saw some tough games to come and keeping that focus throughout the entire season. That's been a really difficult thing to pull off, but so far, they've done it, and they've done it well. They've given him some different looks here defensively in the early going. He's only hit two of his first five passes. With a big third down coming up, he's hoping he's got a play dialed up that can take advantage of whatever the defense throws at him. Here comes the seventh play now of this drive, as this is third and 10. 12, 12, 12. 11, 11, 11. 11 MT, 11 MT. And Burrow going to throw again. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Dante Jackson picks it, and he'll take it across midfield and down to the 48 yard line. And I think this is a situation where a quarterback coach in the sideline is going to talk to a signal caller and say, listen, it's third and long, and it's still early in the game. Let's not force things here. If we don't feel good about it, let's just check something down and pump the football. shy of the 10. A big pickup of 38. But when you're able to break a run against a cover two or a two deep zone, safeties are back a little ways. What you're counting on is the guys taking care of business up front and then maybe climbing to the second level. In a double coverage and it's intercepted. Point. 
He hasn't missed an extra point all season, and he won't miss this one either, and it's 7-0. Shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And we'll see a return here from the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Broncos onto the field ready to start their next drive. And there, of course, was a lot of talk about this ball game coming into play. Two division leaders in the AFC. Could this be a potential playoff preview down the line? Yeah, and I think when you're talking about the talk about this game coming into play, you're talking about me because I blew up your phone all week prior to this one. I'm so excited about this game because, to me, it's not out of the realm of possibility that these two teams see each other again down the road. I like this matchup. They match up very well against each other. To throw on second down, here's Hooker. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Hooker now off play action. Delivering the pass here to Evans on the out route. Just a gain of a couple there. And that will bring up second down. You talk about this Bengals defense. Against the pass, they've had some issues. Ranked number 23 in the NFL right now. Take those rankings, throw them right out the window. Because this is what you prepare for. This is what you practice for. This is what you think about. The ultimate test, taking on the number one overall offense in the league. From the 44-yard line, here's second down and eight. Hooker. That's caught at the 25. And all the way home for the Broncos score. Cortland Sutton, his second touchdown on the season. And the Broncos are an extra point away from evening this one up. A nice throw there by the second-year quarterback. And I don't believe that's the kind of play he would have made as a rookie because usually your rookie season is a continuation of your college days. A lot of one read, and if you don't have it, you just take off and go. Now he's settled in the pocket a little bit more, reading the field and getting to a second and sometimes third progression. That was a nice play. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And here comes a return from a few steps into the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Here we go. The Bengals drive about to get going. And they, as mentioned, unbeaten to this point in the year, but you think this game, their toughest test yet. I absolutely do because to me this is a good measuring stick game because they've been able to take advantage of the schedule but here this is another team leading its division with an eye on making a Super Bowl run so this game is crucial. Well this is taken in it's complete. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and ten all the way down at the 35. Now the Broncos are going to take a timeout. He'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. Quill, quill, quill. 11 mighty, 11 mighty, 11 MT tight, 11 MT tight. They will throw on first down with Burrow. Looking left side and it's complete. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. Now they'll put a receiver in motion left. Touchdown, Bengals! A 5-yard touchdown. And the Bengals have taken it. 
taken the lead. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that makes the score 14 to 7. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And this will come out to the 25 as Hamler elects not to return it. Denver offense at the line, ready to go. After that last score we just saw, now 14 to 7, so a chance to march down the field here, try to tie this football game. And this is caught by Evans. So no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. 18, 18, 18, 16. From the gun, it's Hooker. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Now it looks like we've got a Bronco that's banged up on the play. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. Again, it's Hooker looking to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. It'll go as a gain of four, and it's second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Here's Hooker. He's got Hamler on the out route. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Here's a second and eight. 60 Eagles, 60 Eagles. Here's Hooker to throw it. And he will find his man Sutton. That's complete. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 23. 23 yards to pick up there. And maybe that touchdown on the previous drive has re-energized this offense a little bit. They've been kind of sluggish until then. But they're showing signs of life here. And they get good yardage that time in a first down. Hooker on first down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. 
It'll be a gain of five, and that'll make it second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Looking to throw, Hooker rolling to his right. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. Well, you know me, whether you need it or not, I'm going to give away unsolicited advice. Just throw it downfield out of the pocket only if you're absolutely sure. Otherwise, use your running ability and try to get those yards a safer way. The Broncos on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be third and five. Working out of the shotgun, Hooker. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. And based on my math, they've only converted one time thus far in this game, so you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. The kick by Maher is good. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. Well, certainly they'd rather have the scenario they had last time out, Charles. Remember, they had the short field. They... zone now this is going to have to be a longer more sustained drive if they want to get points yeah a little bit more of a quick strike opportunity last time by where they were on the field and you're exactly right about that but now backed up a little bit what's that old expression we love to use time to matriculate the ball down the field and try and do it again 11, 11, 11. they'll start here with a give to Mixon. And some room to work. A big pick up of 38. That's good for us, Cincinnati Bengals. First and 10 at the 47 yard line. Here we go. Here so we the go. line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 11, now as 11. they come up first and 10. 11, 11. Now it's Burrow. It won't be a sack, but it's no gain, and it brings up second down. And quickly, they get to the line. 11-11-11. Here's Burrow. They'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. This one complete to Yoshi Box. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that last throw puts him over 5,000 yards passing now on the season already. Some rarefied air with numbers like that. 
But don't keep the oxygen just for yourself. Pass some over to me, my friend, because given the fact he still has a number of games remaining on the schedule, that number is going to go sky high. And now we'll get a late timeout as it comes in the waning moments of quarter number two. So first and 10 now from the 30. 12, 12. And they go play action now. Burrow. Trying for Brown and it's intercepted. Picked up by Caden Stearns. And he will be brought down on what will be the final play of this first half. So two quarters down, two remain. Charles and I return after the break. Welcome you back now alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn getting set for quarter number three here. The Bengals set to receive. They have the lead and the football to begin quarter number three. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Bengals drive about to get going. And Charles, they got the lead. I would imagine the overall halftime tone was a positive one, but what do you think the talking points were in the locker room? Well, if there were three talking points at the half, partner, all of them were about turnovers because they were pretty loose with the ball. Otherwise, this lead could be even bigger. Now, I don't think that they overly harped on it, but I think they told them, guys, if you want to keep calling those plays that are exciting, you've got to take care of the ball. Otherwise, we may have to dial things back a little bit. Great play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. Mixon with a first down carry. And he's got it across midfield and into the Denver territory. They're going to hurry back to the line now. Back to Mixon on second down. Crossover out of bounds right at the 25. 74 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Good, strong, explosive run that started inside, which means you've got to control those defensive linemen, the defensive tackles, the nose guards. Those guys have to be controlled. How about the offensive line, the job they just did? Yeah, key that A-gap usually on those runs, right? That's where it all starts because everyone wants to kind of control that area. It disrupts things from the defensive side and the offensive side. As we just saw, it opens up possibilities. Here we go. 12, 12, 12. First down, here's Burrow. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. Yeah, their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. 11, 11, and they'll bring 11. the big tight end across the formation left. 11, MT, 11, MT. Play action. It's Burrow. And that is caught. He's gone for a big touchdown. 25 yards for the touchdown. And the Bengals 
Bucks take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that makes it a 21-10 game. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And they're going to mark that where it went out of bounds. So really good starting field position up past the 40-yard line. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. Throwing. Hooker. He'll buy some time right. And an off-balance throw there, and it's going to wind up incomplete. Well, defensively, they haven't let him just sit in the pocket and get comfortable, and that's opposite a lot of game plans in today's NFL. Ordinarily, you're trying to keep the quarterback hemmed in. In this case, they brought the heat, and if he flushes out, they're fine with that, and they force another incompletion. Second and ten, Hooker back to the air. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on, third down. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long game or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. He has a first down, and that catch will also put him over 100 yards receiving now on the afternoon. They go play action. Here's Hooker. And he's got his man in stride. Complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that'll give him a short yardage situation here for second down. 18 rally, 18 rally. Hawk 70, Hawk 70. Now a handoff up the middle. Harrell, and same result. He's going to take this just to the line of scrimmage before running into a brick wall. Well, now hang on here because he appears to be shaken up. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Hooker's going to throw it. He completes it to Evans. And he will have a Broncos first down as that'll be a pickup of about five as they convert on third and inches. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. And he'll take this inside the 30 to about the 29, maybe the 28-yard line. That's a nice job there defensively being able to diagnose that little touch pass. They saw it coming, converged on it before he could get much out of it. Second down, eight to go from the 28. complete and they are able to 
stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And this is an offense in need of getting a few good things to happen. Here's one right here. They've had their share of struggles in key moments, but that's a nice throw and nice work after the throw. And they're set go, up now with a first and goal. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. P. Ryan is not going anywhere. They'll be hit and dropped for no gain at the two-yard line. Not able to go anywhere that time. Second down. This is a critical sequence here for this offense. Things really haven't gone their way so far. This could be their chance to get back into it, but they've got to find a way to punch this ball in. They'll try to run this one in, and he'll get in. Touchdown, Denver. A great play there with his ninth rushing touchdown on the year, and the Broncos have got it back to within a score. So a strong drive here to lead off this third quarter and gets them right back in this football game. And I think we can safely call that a statement drive because they had to be saying, we have put our best foot forward in the first half, but we certainly mean business now. Maybe a better term, a prove-it drive. They proved it to themselves that they were ready to go. And now they'll empty the backfield here as they elect to go for two. Hooker going to try to throw for it. And he's got it. So the try for two successful. And with it, they're back within a field goal. Well, I guess the coach looked at the two-point cheat sheet, said go for it, get it to a three-point game, and they did it. Yeah, and sometimes you just throw out time of game. You don't worry about that. There's just a feel sometimes in making that call. And he felt good about what he had for a two-point conversion. And now they're only down three and feeling great about themselves. Following the touchdown, here's Marr to kick it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. Still enjoying the lead here in the third quarter despite their defense giving up that last touchdown. Now they'll see if they can get the equalizer here on this drive. And he'll take this across the 25 before going out of bounds. It's a Bengal first down, a pickup of 11. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, He's not going to catch go. the football. He's going to run away from me a little bit, and that's exactly what he just did 11, there, picking 11, up extra 11. yardage. 11, 11. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. He'll get a yard. That's all as they get him down at the 28. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. 11, 11, 11, 11, 12, 12, 12, 11, mighty, 11, mighty. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. Here as he's taken down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense. So he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. And that's a really good job there defensively. They went into this possession knowing that they needed to get a stop. They're in a tight ball game, and they got it done. Great work to force the three and out. Got the football right back for their offense. They've got to go to the sidelines feeling pretty good about themselves and encouraging their offensive mates to get some points. He was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. And returning it, here's Hamler. Only 29 yards on the punt there, definitely not his best. And it'll be a short field for the Broncos as they take over first and 10. Get 
Hooker to throw on first and ten. This is Hamler on the receiving end. Yeah, he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. The Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Hooker. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And it's second down. Brings up second and five. Come on, come on. the middle they go. Harold. It'll be a pickup and a couple that leaves him with a third and three. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts. Being able to diagnose runner pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. Play action. Here's Hooker. And a catch right side by Evans. So he'll be stopped here for no game. And that's going to make it fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. Marr able to put this one through, but now there is a penalty marker on the field, so let's see what this is about. The Charles, they're trying to protect this lead late. Those are the types of mistakes they could afford to go without. About the last thing you want to give them is help in completing a comeback, which is exactly what that penalty go, does. Man. So a special team's mistake on the field goal try leads to a new set of downs inside the red zone. Now Hooker. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. Well, any caused incompletion is good for a defense. But when you add to it, you get a little hit on the quarterback, knock him to the ground, make him think a little bit, hopefully knock him off his game, especially in a game of this magnitude, this tight in the fourth quarter. Got to feel pretty good as a defense. The Broncos on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Hands it off out of the gun. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. A great effort there. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Broncos have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. So it's a pretty good season he's putting together running the football. That now 10 rushing touchdowns on the year. And we know this is a passing league and those numbers throwing the football. They seem to go up and up every year. But there's still something to have a reliable back you can count on in the red zone to bring things home for you. And that's what he's been doing all season long. Following the touchdown, here's Marr to kick it away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. The Bengals drive about to get going. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. 86 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Here we go. Back to Mixon on first down. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 12 yards that time and a Cincinnati first down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, 
this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Here we go. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Back-to-back go. good plays have him on the move oh, on man, first hey, down. Hey, hey. And Burrow giving it to Mixon on the option. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right of the yard. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. On two, ready? Under four to go now as the clock runs, and they come up on second down. 11, 11, 11. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. This pass complete to Martin. First target, first catch on the first down. being bigger. Second and six. 12, 12, 12. 11, 11, 11. Stop. Burrow looking to pass. He'll take his shot for the end zone. And he's got it. Touchdown. Jamar Chase with touchdown number 23 here on the year. And the Bengals answer back with a touchdown of their own to take a fourth quarter lead. Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And solid field position here to start as they get this out to the 40-yard line. And when you're facing a deficit on the scoreboard, you're just looking for something to get you right back into the game, and that's the spark that they were looking for. They got it with that big return. The Broncos onto the field ready to start their next drive. And you sense the tide turning. They scored, then their defense forced the punt, and now a chance to ultimately take the lead here late. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, that one's all about the defender making life difficult for the receiver. Very tough for a guy to hold on to the football through all that contact. He ends up forcing the incompletion. On second down, Hooker. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Well, they approach this drive with a lot of confidence after the last one ended up as a touchdown. But incompletions on their first two throws as a huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get the momentum going again. They're able to get the third down conversion. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. 
Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. Plenty of time and two timeouts still at their disposal. First and ten here. Now a handoff up the middle. Harold. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Partner, they're clearly saving those timeouts, but they still have to work with some urgency to put themselves in the right position. They'll come up first and ten here. if they can. On second down now, Harold, an incompletion, now a short pickup. That's not going to do it. Yeah, you've got to get to the line of scrimmage quickly, get set up, and aim downfield. A big play here. Crowd on their feet. Third and four. Six devices, six devices. Check back, check back. Let's go. They'll keep it on the ground. Harold. I guess at the very least, they got the tackle from keeping him out of the end zone. Yeah, you're looking for that silver lining, aren't you? But guess what? Everything changes now after that big play. They've got a chance to strike. With inside of 10 seconds, eight to be precise, we get whistles and a timeout on the field. Here's first and goal. They'll try to run this one in. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. Now there's the timeout. Signal four with two seconds to go. And the field goal unit likely trying to send this one to overtime. And his kick here is good. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. So it's the Broncos who are going to get the first shot at things. They'll have it here as we start in overtime. And he's going to be out of bounds across the 50. Great return. Now that was an excellent return to start overtime. So do they get crazy and attack the end zone and try and get the six points to end the game? Or do you just play it to where you kick the field goal and put the game in the hands of your defense? Three, three. 
18 Rattlers, 18 Rattlers. 60 Eagles, 60 Eagles. On the ball, on the ball, now. They'll run on first down. Harrell, he'll take this to the 46. Short gain there to start overtime. Almost a tester play, wasn't it? Wanted to see if the guys on defense were going to fit the gaps the correct way because we're in overtime. So it's not just physical tiredness out there, right? Mentally, are you still doing what you're supposed to do? And they were up to the task on that play. And certainly fatigue on both sides of the football. Now a first throw here in overtime. He's got Hamler on the out route. And that's good for a gain of six. And now it's third and three. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Third down, Hooker. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, I know you're toward the middle of the field here, but still, fourth down this distance. You've got to punt it right. That's definitely the first instinct because you say, okay, let's just play some field position, make sure we don't lose the game here, turn it over in a key spot. But if you feel really good about your trigger guy, if you feel great about him, he might want to leave the ball in his hand to let him work his magic. A big call here in overtime. They're going for it on fourth down. Now with the play clock down to two, we're going to get a timeout here. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. So a big move here, playing to win in overtime. They're going to go for it on fourth down. They'll go for it, Hooker. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Broncos unable to convert here on fourth, and the Bengals will get the football back. Gun, gun. The Cincy gun. offense about ready to go here on their next drive. Well, their defense did the job, got off the field without giving up any points, and now, Charles, all they need here is a field goal, and they get the victory. Yeah, and this is the way I love overtime. I'm one of those really, really old school guys. They're like sudden death right from the beginning. Well, we've got it now because any points wins the game. On defense, get a safety, a pick six, fumble return. You can win it as well. Here we go, here we go. So I'm really looking forward to this series and see how both sides play it. 11, 11, 11, 11. Back to Mixon on second down. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. 120 yards rushing for him now as he is just trying to will his guys to an overtime victory. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And he is going to have the Bengals first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert there on third and one. Most of their damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've rung the bell three times with passing touchdowns, but guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. On one, ready? Again, it's Mixon. And he'll be taken down right around the 41-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Oh, and it's intercepted. And the Broncos are going to have it with a chance to win the game here. 
in overtime. Just a massive interception there, Charles, to keep this overtime going. And really, both defenses now have come up huge in this overtime. How about one forcing the turnover on downs because you know that first possession, if you score a touchdown, that wins the game, and they went for it, and they kept them from getting it done. And then the other defense comes on the field, and they pick one off. Who's going to make the big play now on offense that can lead to a field goal that can win this game? And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. This being their second opportunity in overtime, third overall drive, see if they can settle into a rhythm. And that's what you're looking for. Get a few first downs, move the ball downfield, have some confidence, get yourself in a spot where you can at least kick a field goal to win it. But I tell you this, if I'm the play caller, I'm looking at that part of my sheet that says playmakers. Get the ball in their hands, critical situation, now's their time. Working out of the shotgun, Hooker. Open man, Hamler, that's complete. They like going to him in the slot, he catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Here's Hooker to throw it. Finding Sutton, and he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They go back to that well. He's had a great game. Defensively, they haven't been able to stop him. Same thing here in overtime. And sometimes that goes to the play caller's ego because a lot of times you have so many different plays you want to call, but when you spot a matchup that's working for you or a player that has the hot hand, Keep giving it to them. That tells me you're mature as a play caller, and it's working for them in overtime. They try to run on first down, but this defense says no dice. They stop him a couple yards behind the line of scrimmage. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. Hooker to throw. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. They'll wind up losing 10 on the sack, and it'll lead to a third and long. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Throwing here is Hooker. That is caught. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 42. And now with six seconds left in overtime, they're going to take a timeout. Here's Hooker. They're going right back to Hamler. Yeah, he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Now the timeout comes here. In the waning seconds of this overtime, as we could be set up at long last for a potential game winner. So it all rests now on the right foot of Brett Moore. This to win it in overtime. And he got it. The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. And it'll be all smiles on Blake Street tonight. The Broncos have won it. And for the visitors, it is going to be a happy flight home. It is always such a treat, Charles, in the NFL when you can go on the road and get a victory, and that's exactly what they accomplished here today. Ah, uh, the trip home so much sweeter, isn't it? All the noise they heard before, how tough it is to win on the road, how tough it is to play in this stadium.
it back. Run it back, 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 run it, run it, run it, run it back, run it back, run it, run it, run it back, run it back.